Hi, welcome to a discussion on Edison 3-wire. And Edison 3-wire is a, a type of circuit that's found um, most residents, um, agricultural uh, installations. And again, this would be for single phase distribution. So what we start with here in Edison 3-wire is we have essentially it's called line one and line two, and then we have our neutral conductor. It's in the middle here. Now we have the possibility of having two different voltages with an Edison 3-wire. We have our 120s that you can see here, but if you went from line one to line two directly with no neutral connection, you'd get a 240 volt connection as well. And so that can be quite beneficial because a lot of times in our you know, residences, um, we need to have 240 for our dryer element or the elements in our range as well. So again, having that ability to have two different voltages is quite handy. So what we're going to do is take a look at all of the different voltages that we have at our various loads throughout the Edison 3-wire. We're going to take a look at the current that we have on our line 1, line 2, and then we're also going to be taking a look at the um, current in our neutral conductor. The neutral conductor is there to essentially balance out the voltages between loads that are associated with line 1 and line 2. And it keeps the, the voltages at those two loads fairly consistent. The next video that I'm going to have will show what happens if we lose that neutral conductor in a setup. So we'll look forward to that video as well. But right now we're going to take a look at it if everything is connected and working properly. So let's go through this first of all. So just taking a look at this circuit here, we have load one is a four amp load, load two is a 10 amp load, load three here is a 12, and we have another three amp or a three amp load on load four. And that's how it would go, load one, load two, three, and four. Then you'll notice that we have these little resistors, squiggles on our wires going to the loads, and that is just there to represent a certain amount of resistance that would be for the wires that come from your panel to your loads in your, your home, for instance. So that would be your 14.2, 14.3, whatever you have there. So again, that's just there to represent resistance in the wire, whatever length that would be. So for our purposes here, we're going to do something simple and we'll keep it at 0.1 of an ohm, and that makes it nice and easy for our calculations. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here is taking a look at how much current is going through each of these wires here. So this again is line one, line two, down here, line one, line two. So to feed this 10 amp load, we obviously know that we're going to only have 10 amps going through that particular conductor there, and it would be going in this direction. We'll just assume that everything is going in this particular direction, line one returning to line two using the neutral as a, a balancing a wire for, for our various loads. But we'll assume that everything is going in a clockwise fashion around the circuit. And again, most of the times that you'll see an Edison 3 wire is connected to AC, so current can go both directions. But what we're going to be doing for math purposes is only looking at it at a snapshot in time where current is flowing in this direction just to make things simple. Okay, so we've got 10 amps flowing in that direction here, and we know that we would have 10 amps coming out of that load. Okay, so we have 10 amps coming into this junction here, and we only have three amps flowing through here. So we'll just do the easiest ones first, and we know that it's going in that direction. Okay, then when it comes through here, we have a 12 amp load here, and it goes through and it adds to the three amps that are already flowing through here. So we come out of here, and it would be going in this direction. So if we add 12 and 3, we know that we have 15 amps on this particular section of wire here, and it would be flowing back in this direction. Okay. So then the only thing left to do is figure out how much current is going through this wire. Well, we know that we had 10 going that way, and we have 4 going in this direction here, 10 amps leaving there, 4 amps leaving there. So we have 14 amps flowing in this direction here. Okay. So that it takes care of our, our outer wires, our line one and line two. The only thing now we have to think about is our neutral conductor, what's happening here. 
Okay, so like I mentioned, we have three amps flowing through here. We'll just we'll start at the, the back end of the circuit and work our way back that direction. We know that we have 10 amps flowing into here, and we only have three at this junction leaving. So that means that we have a, a difference of seven. So where do they go? Well, they go back in this direction. Okay, so we know that on this particular stretch of wire here, we have seven amps. Sorry, maybe just draw that over here. And it's flowing in this direction. It's flowing away from that junction because we had an excess of amps of seven, so they have to go back towards the supply. Okay, so we have seven amps flowing in that direction. Okay, so we know that seven amps is going to be flowing into here, to this junction. This gets a little bit com confusing because we have, you know, four different directions that current could be going here. We know that we have four amps coming through load one to here and seven coming into here. Now, here on load three, we have a full 12 amps that have that. So we're only bringing four in from this direction, seven from this direction, but we need 12 to satisfy this load here. So that means that we have one amp, sorry, maybe draw that over here, just to keep that out of the way. One amp flowing through there and it has to go in this direction. So we got one amp coming from here, four amps coming from here, so that makes a total of five. Add another seven from this direction, and that gives me my total of 12 going through there. So at that particular intersection there, we have a total of four, seven, and one coming in to satisfy the 12 that need to go for load three. So that's how I look at it. I always kind of use the analogy that it's like an intersection. So you have 10 cars coming in, but only three leave this direction, so that means the other seven have to go that way. And I just kind of use that, that analogy of an intersection. So this is like a three-way intersection, this is a four-way intersection, and that helps me with that. So taking a look at this directions of current flow helps us to address some of the other issues that we're going to uh, look at as far as figuring out our calculations, and you'll see why this is important in a second here. So we know that everything is going in this direction around the outside conductor. We'll worry about the neutral in a second here. So what we can do is start m putting polarity markers on the portions of resistance here, here. Well, we'll do the outside first. There, 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 and there. And because we're going to go with electron current flow, it goes from negative to positive. So we'll say that this is negative here, and it's going in this direction, so that means it goes negative to positive. make that as clear as possible. And here it goes negative to positive. And then when it comes back here, it's going negative to positive. And here it's going negative to positive. Okay, so you'll see why this is important in a second here. And then the next thing we'll do is our neutral conductor. And we know that we have directions on our neutral conductor. And you'll notice that one is going in this direction and one is going in this direction. That's a total you know, reality with a neutral conductor, it does whatever needs to be done and current will flow in it in either direction based on what the loads dictate. All right, so we're going this direction, we go this is negative and this is positive. Okay, but now it's going in this direction on this particular portion of the neutral conductor, so it goes negative here and positive here. Okay. So let's take a look at why or how we can use those polarity markings. Um, we'll be using those in figuring out our voltage drops here and here at our loads. So on load one, two, three, and four, we'll be able to use the polarity markings because we're going to have a slight voltage drop here, we're going to have a voltage drop here, 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 here. So we'll have six voltage drops, and those will dictate whether they're additive to the, the total voltage at the load, or they're subtractive, and you can see that. So we've got a negative symbol here or a positive symbol here, so it's a subtractor or an adder, depending on the direction that we're going at. So what we always do is we take a look at each of these loads individually, and we kind of take them as a, as a box. So we've got, you know, box one, box two, three, and four, and what we'll do is we'll work around just like we did, we said that the current was going in this direction. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to 
we're going to be taking a look at the currents or the voltage drops and we'll be doing additive or subtractive based on going around in a clockwise fashion there. All right, so that's what we'll be doing. Let's get this off of here so that we don't have that in the way. And I'll just erase that real quick. But that's the direction we go. We go clockwise in each of those boxes there. Okay. So let's take a look at our first voltage drop here, and we'll calculate what that is. Now we know we have 14 amps flowing through here, and we know we have 0.1 of a, an ohm of resistance. So again, using Ohm's law, which you should be familiar with by now, we'll say that this is 1.4 volts. We've got a voltage drop of 1.4. And we're going to do all of them now. We'll just get them all calculated here. So we've got 10 amps flowing through 0.1 here, and that makes this 1.0 volts. We come down, let's do the bottom here, and this makes this 0.3 of a volt. And 15 here, this makes this 1.5 volts. This is only one amp, and again, that makes this quite an easy calculation. 0.1 of a volt there, not much. And here we've got seven, so this is gonna be 0.07. That's why using 0.1 is such a nice multiplier for this. So now I know all of my voltage drops, and now we'll start doing the, the addition or subtraction and figure out what our voltage drop here at load one is to start with, okay? So we always start with our, our supply voltage of 120, and then we're again going in this direction here, going clockwise around, we start with a, a negative symbol there, and that tells us that we're gonna subtract 1.4 from 120. So that leaves us with 118.6, and then we come through the load, and we come back here, and we see that our first symbol that we, we come in contact with is a positive symbol, or an add, and that tells us to add 0.1 to that. So we had 118.6, and then we add 0.1, so that tells us that it's 118.7 volts at load one. Okay. So then we'll stay on the top quadrant here and we'll work with box two. And again, we're gonna be going in this direction here. Now you could start with 120 and work your way through, but it would, you'd have to remember to do this voltage drop, this voltage drop, this voltage drop, and this voltage drop to get there because all of the voltage has to go through and back in that direction. But the easier way to do is just start with 118.7 because you've, you've already calculated for these. So start with 118.7, and then you see you've got a, a negative symbol here, and you subtract one volt from that, okay? So you, you've got 118.7, you subtract one volt from that, so that gives you 117.7, and then you come around back here, and you, again, subtract 0.7, so that leaves you with 117 volts even. Okay, so now we know our first two loads on line one. So 118.7 on load one, 117 volts on load two. Okay, so now let's go down and do the bottom section here. Go to load three, which is our 12 amp load. Again, we get to start with 120, and we come through here and we see that we've got a, uh, a negative symbol. So we're gonna subtract 0.1, which isn't much, 0.1 of a volt. So we're at 119.9. And then we come through here and we come down here and we lose another hole because again, we've got the subtractive symbol there. We lose 1.5 volts again. So that gives us a total of 118.4 volts. All right, so again, start with 118.4 volts. We come over here and we see that we have an additive symbol. So that tells us that we're going to take 118.4 and we're gonna add 0.7 to that. So that gives us 119.1, but we're not done. Come through the load here and we see that we've got a subtractive symbol and we've lost um, 0.3 of a volt. And so that takes us down to 118 0.8 volts there. 
So that is all of our voltage drops. And we've calculated everything. So there's really nothing else left to calculate here. We've calculated every voltage drop at all of our loads. We've determined how much current is on each of the neutral conductors and the direction of current flow in that conductor. So that concludes our demonstration and calculations of an Edison 3-wire. I hope this helped. And the next video, like I mentioned, will be on a broken uh, Edison 3-wire. So if the neutral breaks, what happens to the, the voltages on the particular loads? And again, you can see that based on our, our calculations here, the load voltages were fairly consistent, ranging from 117 at the lowest to 118.8. .8. So not a lot of uh, variation in the voltages. So again, it, having that neutral conductor, in there, neutral conductor in there makes a huge difference and it really balances out the voltages at our particular loads. And again, you're gonna see a huge problem when we lose that neutral conductor. And I look forward to showing you that in our next video.